Welcome back to the Untitled RPG Devlog. In this episode... Wait, that's not right. Welcome back to the Titled RPG Devlog. The first big piece of news is that the previously Untitled RPG now has a title. We're calling it Dichotica, which is the same name as the world the game takes place in. Having a name is an important step in giving a game its identity. Another big change to the game was the release of Game Maker Studio 2.3. 2.3 added tons of new features, but made some changes to the workflow that I had to adapt the project to. My favorite change is the ability to group multiple related functions into a single script, and while I haven't had the chance to mess around with them, sequences seem like a powerful tool that will be useful for a lot of upcoming features. The release of GameMaker 2.3 is why it's been a month since the last time I posted a devlog. A lot of the work I've been doing is rather boring, reorganizing scripts and fixing bugs that cropped up after the upgrade. In-game, there have been some big changes too. The first one is a new focus on adding sound to the game. While music has been in the game for a while, the transition between tracks used to be an abrupt cut. This sudden change wasn't very pleasant to listen to, especially when traveling between different areas. I've overhauled the music system, so now the old music fades out for a second before the new music kicks in. Here, take a listen to how it sounds in game. There's also the ability to have a track immediately interrupt the current music. For example, getting into a battle still does a sharp cut to the music. Take a listen here. I've also been working on adding sound to text boxes. In some games, characters will play a sound effect as their text scrolls by, and this feature has been added to Dichotica. Each character will play the sound at a varying pitch, allowing players to differentiate characters with their ears as well as their eyes. I did have one issue with implementing this though. My old text box code only took the name of for a character, the text that they say, and a special string of characters that determines what combination of yes and no answers the player has to input for that text box to show up. While I could have attached the attributes of the sound that plays to the name, there were various issues with this approach. For example, what would happen if the player named one of the party members the same thing as an NPC? What about when I display the character's name as a bunch of question marks? Will all the unknown characters have the same voice? At the same time, I was struggling with some other issues with the dialogue system. Adding an emotion to a piece of dialogue was annoying, since it involved writing two lines of code per text box. I've also been pretty lazy with dialogue, putting text boxes all over the place. I realized that if we ever wanted to get this game translated into another language, this would be a disaster for the localization team to figure out. With all these reasons to do so, I decided to just bite the bullet and rework the dialogue system. The new system is much more flexible with adding new features, so hopefully I won't have to rework it again. First, instead of a name, I give the dialog box a dialog character. This is essentially just an ID for the character that's talking, but I use an enumerator to make them more distinguishable. The dialog character currently determines the character's name, speech sound, and the pitch of their speech sound. Also, NPCs with the same dialog character as the current text box will have an emotion bubble show up above their head. Speaking of which, the next argument is the emotion for the statement, which determines which bubble should be shown. Finally, we have the same two arguments as before the code, and the actual text that goes into the text box. I've also been moving all the dialogue to a single script file. Instead of having to hunt down a specific place to change a bit of dialogue, I can now find it all quickly in this file. This also means that the entire script for the game can be accessed easily by others who may need it. This change to the dialogue system has not been quick or easy. In fact, I'm still working on transferring the old dialogue over. Still, I'm pretty confident that after I finish this, I won't have to mess with the dialogue system again to add new features, and reading dialogue and code is a lot easier this way. The last thing I'd like to talk to you about is two problems with the game design that I've been having. Both problems stem from me feeling like I need to add something because it's a staple of other RPGs, but not being able to figure out how it should work. First, while I've added experience and levels to the game, I'm having trouble figuring out what they should do. In other RPGs, leveling up will do things like increase the amount of damage you do, decrease the damage you take, and increase your health. In Dichotica, changing these values would make leveling up a huge swing in power, since most of the numbers are so small. My initial solution to this was to make it so that then a specific equipment would be locked behind different levels. But in practice, I don't really see this working. To even get the equipment, you'll have to do side quests, optional fights, or search for hidden treasure chests, so it doesn't make sense to me to also force players to be a specific level. Additionally, while experience was used in older games to incentivize players to fight monsters, in Dichotica you were unable to run away from battles, and most battles cannot be avoided. For the battles that you can avoid, usually players are rewarded for completing them with an item, and all battles reward gold that can be used in shops. My question is this, do you think that there's a place for an experience system in this game? If so, 
What benefits should players get by leveling up? My second question is about the shop. At shops in many RPGs, players are able to sell unwanted items for some extra money. In this game, though, a lot of items are one of a kind, obtained through side quests and treasure hunting. Plus, players have a chest where they can store an infinite quantity of every item in the game. When players are having trouble with a boss or dungeon, I want them to be able to go back to a bank chest and totally change their equipment. Given this, does selling items have a place in this game? I was thinking of perhaps only letting players sell items that they could buy from the shop, allowing them to sell consumables and some generic armor, but I'm still not sure. That's it for this devlog. If you have any suggestions about XP or selling items, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you want to keep following the progress of Dichotica, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. Thanks, and have a great day.